In the opening scene, we see a man who appears to be an office worker. He wakes up and discovers that he is locked inside a vault room, which contains nothing but a padlocked metal cupboard, a lifeless rat, and a fluorescent lamp filled with dead flies. The man gets up on his feet and attempts to open the vault door, but his efforts are in vain. At first, he suspects that his colleagues are trying to pull a prank on him, so he searches around for hidden cameras, but finds none. A few hours pass by, and there's still no activity from beyond the vault door. This causes the unnamed man to become more puzzled as to what is going on. A short while later, he begins to get desperate and pounds on the door, expressing an urgent need to use the bathroom, but his voice goes unanswered. He tries calling for help using his cell phone, but there is no network inside the vault. His attempts to break open the metal cupboard also prove futile. Frustration mounts, leading him to verbally lash out at his colleague, claiming that he will fire him once he gets out of it. Following this, the man resorts to using his belt to make noise against the door, in hopes that someone will hear the sound, but again, to no avail. In an act of defiance, he urinates inside the vault, believing that he is humiliating those pranksters who are behind all of this. However, there is still no response, and now he's just standing in his own piss. As the hours pass, exhaustion sets in, and the man becomes weaker due to the absence of food and water. It is the second day. The man, for one more time, checks his cell phone for a network signal, but there is no change. To make matters worse, he accidentally drops his phone while stuffing it into his pocket, causing it to break. At this point, he becomes so thirsty that he decides to do something drastic. He urinates in his leather shoe and drinks it, considering it worse than a light beer. After this, the man begins kicking and punching his surroundings. In the midst of his outburst, he strikes the fluorescent lamp above him and unexpectedly notices a key inside it. Seizing the opportunity, he pulls down the light and retrieves the key, which enables him to open the metal cupboard. Inside, he discovers a collection of tools, notably a blowtorch, a wrench, a hammer, and a chisel. Utilizing these items, the man decides to cut through the vault door. However, his lack of knowledge on how to operate the tool leads him to give up after a few minutes, leaving only a scorched mark on the vault's iron door. Following this, the man attempts to trigger the fire alarm in the ceiling and activate the sprinklers. He is hopeful that he can extract drinkable water from it, but to his disappointment, the alarm is of no use, as even after torching it with fire, nothing happens. This only intensifies his frustration, prompting him to vent his anger on the metal cupboard by knocking it down. However, he soon manages to calm himself down, realizing that he has to save his energy as much as possible because there is nothing to eat. He reassures himself that he is not insane, not dreaming, and is still alive. A few moments later, the man notices a small hole in one of the walls located behind the metal cupboard. With renewed hope, he uses the hammer and chisel to chip away at the wall and create an opening. As he starts breathing, breaking through the walls, the oxygen level within the vault room begins to lower. As a result, he proceeds to inhale the oxygen from the cylinder he had discovered earlier. Unfortunately, the concentration of oxygen proves to be too high, causing him to feel lightheaded. He then closes the valve to balance the oxygen like before. At this point, the man becomes extremely fragile due to hunger. Hence, he sets his sights on a deceased mouse that has become a feeding ground for maggots. He then reluctantly consumes the maggots, leaving the dead rat for later. In the next scene, the man continues his excavation and finally makes a breakthrough. He comes across the steel bars, which he cuts using the blowtorch. Before long, a ray of light penetrates through the hole, giving him renewed hope once again. The man then increases his pace and gradually makes the hole big enough to pass himself through it. However, when he reaches the other side, he becomes distraught to learn that even this room is another vault just like the one he was previously trapped in. This infuriates him a lot because all of his efforts have gone in vain. Unlike the first vault, the second room can contains a coffin and a lamp adjacent to it. Filled with curiosity, he opens the lid of the coffin, only to find a woman dressed in traditional attire, peacefully sleeping inside. Cautiously, he touches the woman to check if she is dead, but much to his shock, she wakes up. Startled by his presence and the sight of the chisel in his hand, she screams in horror and hastily runs away from him. Despite his attempts to communicate, they find themselves unable to understand each other due to the language barrier. Overwhelmed with fear, the woman escapes to the first vault room, where the man had been staying. The latter doesn't try to chase her, and instead he simply lies down in the coffin to take rest. On the third day, the woman wakes the man up and urges him to continue digging the tunnel. However, the poor guy has no energy left to work any further. His hands have also become badly injured due to the relentless labor. With no options left, the man proceeds to teach the woman how to dig the tunnel, and she innocently begins the task. While they are working, the woman realizes she needs to relieve herself and heads to the other room for some privacy. The man follows her and intervenes just as she is about to remove her pants. Through gestures, 
gestures and sign language, he suggests that she urinate in his leather shoes so that they can use it as a source of water. Oh, thank God he figured out a way to not be creepy. Initially hesitant, she eventually agrees to do so. Upon learning that the man has been without water for three days, and her urine is important for his survival. They then proceed with this weird solution, and the man drinks the urine without much thought. He also offers the woman to drink some, and although disgusted, she reluctantly does so. After this, the man consumes some more maggots, gaining the protein he was lacking. He then resumes his digging work, while the woman sits in a corner, overcome with sorrow for her unfortunate fate. She murmurs in her own language, expressing her disappointment that she was meant to attend a wedding that day, and was filled with excitement for the same. However, now that she finds herself trapped, all her joy has disappeared. She cries, questioning what she did wrong to end up in such a dire situation. Witnessing her distress, the man decides to lift her spirits by singing a song. It's called the I Drank Your Shoe Pee song. With his encouragement, the woman slowly wipes away her tears and joins him in singing. However, their fleeting moment of happiness is short-lived, as the man accidentally hits his own hand instead of the chisel, causing him to bleed. As a result, the woman removes her headscarf, tears it into strips, and uses it to bandage his wound. Following this, the two begin work in cooperation, focusing on digging through the wall. As they continue on with their work, the lock on the vault door behind them starts rotating automatically. Seeing this, they immediately rush towards the door in an attempt to open it, but as they approach the door, it becomes locked. This recurring pattern continues, and they consider ignoring it, assuming that someone is toying with them. But, after a while, they finally decipher the actual trick on how to open the door. Turns out that as long as they have their backs turned to the vault door, it unlocks on its own. With this revelation, the man devises a plan, and the duo cautiously walks backwards towards it. Surprisingly, the door remains open, and the two are able to access the third room. But, just like the previous instance, they find themselves in yet another vault, but this time it has an empty grave with a tombstone placed at its center. Upon looking around the room, the woman suggests using the same trick of turning their backs on the vault door to open it. The man likes the idea, and so they position themselves with their backs towards the door and start digging the grave further. Unfortunately, their strategy fails to yield the desired outcome this time. By this point, the man is overcome with exhaustion due to prolonged hunger and dehydration. He gradually loses hope and lays down in the grave. Worried, the woman checks on him and realizes that he has a fever due to his weakened state. After a while, the man begins to think that the mastermind behind all of this wants them to turn against each other. He guesses that they will not be able to escape unless one of them is killed, and that the grave in that room symbolizes the fate of one of them. As tensions escalate, the man contemplates killing the woman, but he lacks the courage to carry out such an act. He cries out, expressing his desperation and stating that he can endure consuming dead rats and maggots, but cannot bring himself to take someone's life. By this moment, the man has lost all hope and and he simply wants to pass away peacefully. However, the woman slaps and kicks him, urging him to stay awake. She then somehow manages to carry him out of the grave and allows him to rest for a while. An hour later, the enraged woman starts screaming and banging on the vault doors. She directs her cries towards God, questioning why she has been trapped and what sins she has committed. Overwhelmed by emotions, she breaks down in tears. Even in this critical moment, she feeds her tears to the man as a means of sustaining his life. Shortly after, she holds his hand and unexpectedly kisses him. She then undresses the man and starts touching him gently, which quickly wakes him up. The plan is to keep him alive by having coitus with him, and even if it fails, at least he'll be stoked. Surprisingly, the plan works, and the man gets rejuvenated after the ordeal. The two then decide to rest for a few hours. In the next scene, the man wakes up and finds the woman curled up beside him. Sensing her discomfort from the cold, he crawls into the second room, tears the velvet lining from the coffin, and returns to cover her with it. Extremely exhausted, the man collapses once again onto the ground. A few hours later, the man hears the vault door unlocking itself, similar to before. Hastily, he awakens the woman, but prevents her from looking at the door. The two then employ their previous trick and somehow manage to walk backward, making their way towards the iron door. As soon as they step outside of the room, they are filled with immense relief as they are greeted by a breathtaking scenery featuring waterfalls, birds, and flowers. Witnessing the paradise in front of them, the two smile at each other, and the movie comes to an end. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you.